All right, so Behringer just released the new version three of the X32 edit app. This is going to be the same application that runs on your Mac or PC, and it is radically different than the previous 2.5 versions. I'll be flipping back and forth between the new version and the old version just so you can kind of get some comparison of the differences. So the first thing that you're going to notice obviously is the home window, now called the mixer window, is a true overview of the entire mixer. And this GUI comes from the X Air application. So any of us that use the uh, Behringer X Air series, we're going to feel right at home with this new overview look. Now you can also have complete resizing of the window and stretching. And so I currently have it stretched wide so that I can see all 32 channels at the same time. That's going to be nice depending on the size of your screen. The main difference in this GUI interface is the fact that you can get a complete overview of all of your auxes. So here you see aux 1 all the way through 16. I've got a couple of those set to um, groups. And we also have our effects buses if you used your last four for effects. You've got those sitting there. And then your monitor mixes and uh, different groups and so on are represented here. And then below your 16 aux sends, you're going to have your gate, EQ, compressor, pan, your scribble strip. And you can now just right click on the scribble strip and get the pop up menu so you can change it uh, a lot easier than you could in the old versions. Here you've got your six DCA assigns, volume, and down here you've got your mute groups and your mute groups over here. And the other really big thing here is, uh, if you're not familiar with Xair, is this Mix 2 section. That simply means that whatever is selected over here in this area is what these faders are mixing to. So typically, if you're just thinking old, old school analog, you know that you're mixing these faders to the master left right. But in sends on fader mode, we used to have to hit sends on fader and then select something to mix to, and then these became sends on faders. Now we simply just select what we want to mix to, and that can be our main left right, our mono output, which for us is our subwoofers. And then of course we run one or six different monitor mixes with our master. And then of course if we're mixing with uh, effects, we can have our effects over here as well. And I just realized that when you're mixing left right, you have mutes. But if you remember, if you go to a, a bus, if you mute that, you're actually muting the mains because you can't mute the bus. So they've got something else going on here now where you can actually turn something off and on and it's not really a mute as in muting the mains. So that's pretty nice and I'm sure it works as we would expect. So that's a quick overview of this new mixer window. Over here on the left hand side we have something very cool as well and that's the ability to make custom layers. You'll notice that right now I've got the first bank selected 1 through 32. I can customize any of these banks. So here's 1 through 16 plus my DCAs, 17 through 32. I have just my aux inputs. I also have my effects returns. I have all 16 of my bus masters. I have my matrix outputs. And uh, here's my subwoofer out. This is showing all of the channels, and I can scroll through here. And then you have two blank users. And I'll show you real quick how this works. You simply go to edit, you've got a blank user bank, and I can make it whatever I want. So if I want to have, if I'm only using four DCAs, I can put in a blank. I can come in and put my main vocals. Let's say they're 17, 18, 19, and 20. I can hit a blank, and then I can hit my subwoofer, which is the mono, and then I can hit left, right, and click off that. So that's a custom bank that I might want to use to always have access to my DCAs, my vocal list, and my mains. And you can also save those. You can also edit any of these. You'll, you'll notice that the interface no longer looks like the board or the mixer. And previously they had the screen, the tabs, and these buttons over here look identical to the hardware mixer. So that's going to take a little bit of getting used to. Uh, but I think that's a good sacrifice getting a better user interface versus just sticking with the way it has to be in order to parallel the hardware. So 
what you'll notice is that home is actually now the channel view. And I've always thought that was strange. This is not really home. It is the channel view. So we have that labeled a little bit better as channel. We have our mixer or overview screen. And then all the tabs that we're used to on the old mixer are going to be there as well as we come down to config, gate, dynamic, EQ, sends, and main. And then instead of uh, having the effects tab be out here on a button or in another menu, they went ahead and took this button and all of these tabs and essentially put them right up here in the two tabs, effects one through four and five through eight. And so now we can select the effect and assign it all within one tab and not have to worry about having a home tab to select our effects and then go and change all the parameters in their own individual tab. And then you'll notice that most of the buttons that we're used to are, are here. Setup, routing, meters, library, scenes, all those things would be over here. Now I have noticed that the recorder function is not down here where it was today in Behringer's release video. So something about what they just released for us to have is not quite the same. And uh, the one thing I've noticed is it's missing this. All right, so the other big thing, of course, is auto mix. Uh, just like Behringer X Air, uh, it does have auto mix on the first eight channels. I can engage the X bank, come over here and assign any of the first eight channels to that bank. I can select one of the channels, and you'll notice on the main output tab, you now have control over the auto mix function and the weighting. A lot of similarities in all of the setup preferences. You've got some new control over the menus and where they appear. I'll show you those in a second. We have a lot more direct MIDI control as well as X control as default control for this as well. So you've got the uh, X touch remote control over Ethernet. We've got a completely new looking routing screen that again follows the X air. So instead of having all the pull down menus that we used to have over here in routing, or they were just lots of pull down menus. So these are your inputs here and inputs now simply look like this. So these would be our four pull down um, boxes and running this way are all the pull down selecting options. So here are the four pull down menus and then we can scroll down to get to all of the input one through eight. It can be any local or AES, A and B. Same thing here, it can be local and this would be a default setup for most guys. If you've got a smaller mixer and you want to get a couple extra inputs off of your AES, you could go in and select that. So the thing about the grid is now working a different way. It's up and down are your boxes, and left to right is your long pull-down menu. And then here's your fifth box, which is your aux in remap, which is equivalent to this box here. All right, so that's just a real quick overview of, of a few of the new things that are in the version 3 software. You are going to want to download the Mac PC Edit software. Uh, they do have the iPad software available. And of course, in order for those to work, you have to have the 3.0 firmware and get that loaded into your hardware. As always, make sure you back up all your settings and presets and shows and then load your firmware. And we'll be doing a lot more videos and uh, tackling each one of these pieces of the uh, X32. Now that we've got some new software, I've been kind of waiting before I did any X32 training until there was something completely new to talk about. And uh, since it relates so closely now to the X-Air, uh, it'll be very easy for us to move into X32 tutorials.